In this video, we're going to learn how to image a virtual object through a diverging lens. And so here, let's say that we've got a, a virtual object, which is to the right of our diverging lens. So conventionally, real objects are to the left and they get imaged through to the right. But now we've got an object to the right. And let's say that DO here is negative 10 centimeters. Remember that if object distances are to the right of the lens, they're negative if the object is virtual, as it is in this case. If, to the, if they're to the left, then they're positive. And let's say that the focal length of this lens is negative 20 centimeters. So it's a diverging lens. It has a negative focal length. And we want to find the following. We want to find the image location, or DI. We want to find the system magnification. We want to know whether the image is real or virtual. And we want to trace out a couple of rays for my image. So where does it form and what do the rays look like going from the object to the image? First of all, you might be wondering what on earth is a virtual object? Well, a virtual object is just where an object would have formed if there's no lens here. So usually these happen in the context of multi-lens systems. So if I secretly have some lenses back in this direction, off to the left, they might form an, uh, an image at this location. And that image would become the new object for my diverging lens. And so it's totally possible that a, an object could be to the right of this lens. So when I solve these types of problems, I like to start with the math. So I like to start by figuring out where exactly the image is located. And that's because that'll help us inform our ray tracing. And so I'm going to use our favorite old equation, which is th that 1 over DO plus 1 over DI is equal to 1 over F. And this is the condition for when an image is formed. And we can use this to solve for DI, which is what we want to find. It's just 1 over F minus 1 over DO, all inverted. Now, the tricky part about this is making sure we get all the signs right, because the focal length is negative, DO is negative, we've got a negative here. So if we're very careful, we've got a 1 over negative 20 centimeters minus 1 over negative 10 centimeters. And I'll, I'll pull the centimeters outside. So these two negatives cancel out and become positive. And so this will end up being positive 20 centimeters. So this is our value for di. And because this value is positive, so it's, it's not negative, but it's positive, then we know that our image is real. So our image is to the right of the lens, and it's, it's real. It, the rays will actually converge in real life to form this image. It, it's not just that they will appear to, con, to diverge from a particular location. We can also get the magnification, which we know is just equal to negative di over do for a single lens. And we know di is positive 20 centimeters, so I've got a negative 20 centimeters on the top, and do is negative 10 centimeters. So these two produce a value of two. The centimeters cancel, and I get an overall magnification of plus two. So I have almost everything that I want so far. I have DI, I have magnification, I, have, I, I know that the image is real. Now, how do I do the ray tracing? And this is probably the most subtle part of this problem, because the rays are still gonna go through this lens in the middle, but I want them to propagate from the left to the right, because that's what's really happening in this optical system. And that's conventionally the direction that we take light to propagate through optical systems. So one ray is fairly straightforward. We know that we'll want one to pass through the center of the lens, because this ray is going to be unperturbed by the lens. It's not going to bend. And so it should pass through the center and converge onto this virtual image, or this virtual object, sorry. But where should we draw our second ray? Well, the second ray is the, all, all a virtual object is, is it's where an image would have been formed if we didn't have this lens here. So if we didn't have this lens here, 
then this ray that I send straight through the diverging lens would just pass right on through and the two rays would converge here and I would have an object. But I do have this diverging lens here. So I need to figure out what actually happens to this ray here. Well, once it hits a diverging lens, it's going to be bent away from the optical axis. And because the focal length is negative 20 centimeters and this distance is 10, it's going to have a more shallow angle than, than this. So I'll draw it like, like so. So this is what's actually going to happen to this ray, which is entering the diverging lens. And now if I connect the two rays, if I propagate them, I see that I have an image that's formed over here. And so this is where, sorry, just one arrow. This is where my image is located. And this makes sense because I want my image distance. We said it was equal to 20 centimeters, positive 20 centimeters. And that looks to be about right. So I'm pretty sure that we did this ray tracing correct. We also wanted the magnification to be about plus two. And indeed, this image looks to be about twice the size of our virtual object. Now, in this case, the image is real. But if we had placed the virtual object further to the right, that wouldn't have been the case. And that's an example we'll go over next time. Finally, I'd like to thank all my patrons on Patreon. Your support is greatly appreciated and it is you who makes these videos possible. If you aren't currently a patron, to get early video access, behind the scenes footage, exclusive content, and join a like minded community, click the link on screen or in the description below. Thanks for watching.